Do you need some spice in your life? Does your boyfriend choose fast food over your last food? Get it, fast food laughing. Are you tired of being the laughing stock of your Thanksgiving dinner with your family? Then you need some all seasoning in your life, man. You need some all seasoning, man, to fully extenu- extenuate. How do you how do you say that? Extenuate. Accentuate the natural flavors, man, of every food by providing simple West Indian fusion spice blends that expand the palate and encourage all to cook. All right. So all seasoning comes in all purpose. My favorite, like I said, because I can, it can go on literally everything, man. They got jerk seasoning, spicy, uh, spicy garlic. They have adobo, lemon pepper. And for a limited time, they have that spicy jalapeno. I'm sorry, smoked jalapeno, man. So look, all these blends can be purchased at allseasoning20.com. And then when you get there, make sure you type in discount code MMOT50 and you're going to get 10% off just like that, man. Welcome back to Meet Me on the 50. I want to thank everybody for tuning in last week for our interview with uh, Mr. Taylor from Southern University. Uh, it was an awesome interview. I got a lot of good feedback, um, a lot of uh, constructive criticism also that's going to help us improve the shows, you know, going forward. But uh, I do want to thank everybody for tuning in. And um, we're back for another one. So this is not the director's corner, but we're starting something in addition to that to help highlight the media teams that are out here year round, man. Um, really just supporting the bands, recording the, uh, you know, recording the bands and just putting, make, creating a platform for otherwise a lot of programs that wouldn't have uh, visibility, man. So we're going to call this something, I'm, I'm still debating on the name of it, thinking something like Behind the Lens or Meet the Media, um, one of the two, man. So help me decide, you know, if, if, if we don't decide this week, we'll do it next time. But leave in the comments what you think the name of this show should be. Help me out. So tonight we have our first episode I'm um, talking to the media teams and the first team, man, we had to get on here from New Orleans, Louisiana. He's been doing this thing for a minute. Uh, a lot of y'all are familiar with him. Uh, he went to uh, St. Augustine High School and something new to me. I didn't know he played this instrument, but he played tuba, sousaphone for the St. Aug uh, Marching 100, man. So um, none other than Marvin Price. Dr. Price TV, man. Welcome to the show. What's going on, man? Thank you for having me. Thank you for being on, brother, man. So I think this is our first time having a sit down. Right, right. You know, I've seen you in person. We've chatted a few times in person, but not uh, on the show. So, you know, I'm a big fan of the show, so I watch every week, uh, tune in. Uh, You always touch the, the topics I like to talk about. So it's really an honor to be on the show. So thank you That's for having dope. me. That's dope, man. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah, so we, we know we, we, we're kicking off this first episode, I think. Which, which one do you like? What's the name that you would prefer for a show like this, man? I said Behind the Lens. You know, help me out. Help me out, Marv. What, what would I you call this? I like both of them. I like Behind the Lens. I know, um, you know, watching news stations, they, they kind of have uh, that, 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 that name, Behind the Lens. I like Meet the Media. This. meet the media like because you have meet me on the 50 uh-huh so it would just it would oh. go inside with your brand already so meet meet the media let's do it hey, it's, <laughs> it's, it's 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 set it's locked hey, i appreciate for hey, thanks for accepting actually you hit me up man i yeah. think you know you hit me up you said brother i need to i need i need to speak on behalf of independent media teams man mm-hmm. um so i think it's good that you're on the show uh before we before this before we started recording this man i did mention that there's a lot of misconception that even i have about some of the um practices and some of the recording right some of the uh coverage that that goes on for hbcu band and dancers man so you know i think this should be very educational for everyone viewing you know and even for myself man so um so you are from new orleans mm-hmm. uh Let's start it this way, Marv. Uh, tell me a little bit about, I guess, your band facts, man. You know, we cover HBCU bands. Right. A lot of people know you for your platform, 
for covering bands, but let's learn more about you. You know, like tell us a little bit about yourself and, um, you know, you can kind of go as far back as you want to, but more relative, you want to talk about band, you know, um, you can talk about some early childhood stuff that kind of got you into music maybe, but you know, let, let, let's just go back a little bit further talking about Mr. Price, you know. Okay, well, my name is Marvin Price. I'm 29 years old. I was born and raised in New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, most affectionately referred to as the Mecca of all bands. And so um, music is life down there, uh, Louisiana, New Orleans, especially band is life. Um, we have a whole season. Some people call it Mardi Gras. We call it parade season. Uh, so, so band is really life down there. Um, I graduated from St. Augustine High School uh, in 2011. Played the tuba from 2007 to 2011. Was section leader my senior year, and I, I really have gotten that full-on band experience. I, I think I got it from both of my parents. My dad played trumpet at Bonneville High School, and my mom. She was the snare drum section leader at Xavier Prep, which is an all girl historically black high school in New Orleans, if you will. And so, you know, growing up, my mom used to take me to all of the St. All football games and we used to sit next to the band. So I was just mm -hmm. always used to to hearing the bands. And, you know, I grew up uh, both pre-Katrina and post-Katrina. And so I got to hear New Orleans bands back when they were on the, the collegiate type style to where they, they were just hungry that they, they yeah. felt that that nobody could touch them it was just a different mentality back then and so naturally you know i wanted to be a part of what i saw mm -hmm. um, band was life um then and it's still life now um so I, I marched for what i believe to be the most historic black high school marching band in the country saint augustine high school and oh, I had a great time. Performed at Saints games. Performed with Mays and Frankie Beverly. Performed mm -hmm. on commercials. You name it, I've done it. Yeah. Um, and so I really had a great experience. Um, that's, so that's my band facts. <laughs> that's dope, man. That's dope, man. So is there any footage? And look, look, don't don't hide it, man. Don't hide it. We want to hear it, man. Any footage of Doc? Oh, absolutely. Doc, is, I, I, so hold on. Absolutely. Is it Doctor Price? Are, are you are you a doctor? I got the same uh, doctorate as Dr. Dre. <laughs> Dr. Dre. Hey, look, we can get into that later on, man. But so so let's get back to my question, man. I want to see some footage, man. I know, look, if you went to St. Aug, mm -hmm. you can't get into that band, you know, unless you, you know, know, you know what you're doing. So, what, you know, can we go on to your channel and see some of your some of your footage, some of you playing or what? I wasn't recording at the time, but there's footage out there with me on the end where the cameras were. And, you know, all I'm going to say is you, you can hear me. <laughs> you know, it wasn't hey, one look. of those. Uh, I wasn't one of those horn holders that you hear about. You know, you could hear yeah. me, and you know, especially my senior year, I wanted all the smoke. And so, so, so you, uh, you talking about pre pre Katrina, man? You know, Ooh. if you know, you know. If you yeah. know, you know. So, um, what do you think about that, Mark? What do you think about you know bands in New Orleans? You know, pre Katrina and and now, I. I think is on the way back bro bands are sounding good down there i mean you I wouldn't mean, know better than me well but tell me what you think the standard is so high right pre katrina bands new orleans bands were just on a different level the, the numbers were bigger um there were less distractions pre katrina um mm -hmm. so, you know now kids are involved in a lot of other things uh, now there's video games high technology games so it's, it's it's a lot more post Katrina that the band directors are, are battling with. Mm -hmm. Pre Katrina band was really light. They were dedicated to their instrument. Um, and, you know, post Katrina now, especially dealing with COVID um, and the schools being shut down for so long and schools didn't really have football season, parade season. And then, you know, in New Orleans, you're also dealing with hurricane season. There's a lot more that the marching bands are dealing with in today's day that's preventing them in my opinion from getting back to the, the level that we used to be on um uh, mm -hmm. so if you ask me they're nowhere near uh back to the the, the pre-katrina level and a lot of local band directors will tell you that and i mean well you can use the g word for real i mean you know um gentrification you know yep. i'm not it ain't, it ain't it it didn't it's not uh it's not missing 
uh, New Orleans, man. It's happening everywhere. I'm sure right. it's happening down there too, man. So that, that's the struggle. Right. Trying to get back with, with a whole new demographic of people now in the city mm-hmm. with, with different priorities, man. You know, um, that that's that, that's my opinion on what's one of the biggest hurdles for the, our yeah. programs not being able to get back, man. So, but yeah, go, but go ahead. Now, I just want to make it clear. Till this day, I still put New Orleans bands up against any other city's bands. Any, As you should. As any. you should. <laughs> <laughs> As you should, man. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to look. While I'm doing my editing and, you know, uh, post-production, I, I'll look up some some clips, man. We're going to find some clips. Yeah, I, you, I can sing you some, too. Yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> um, this is a media conversation. And let's get into it, man. So, Dr. Price TV. You started this channel in 2011. Yeah. Um, but you were recording prior to that, weren't you? Well, I, I actually was a freshman in 2011. So uh, my major was mass communication. Uh, okay. It was broadcast journalism. And so I wanted mm-hmm. to do, so I wanted to start something that went along and coincided with my major. Okay. So uh, before going to Southern, I didn't know much about Southern. My dad went to Southern. My mom went to Southern. Um, but I didn't know much about Southern. I knew who the Southern University Human Jukebox was, mm-hmm. but that's about it. I I didn't step foot on Southern's campus until uh, we marched a homecoming parade in 2010, um, and that was my first time seeing the the, the campus. And my dad, uh, once I got accepted to Southern, he took me around Baton Rouge. I saw LSU's campus first. Then I went to go to Southern's campus. So that that's when I saw the discrepancies on, on both campuses. And, you know, we had a good talk. And then I was able to, to really see what I was going to deal with going to an HBCU. Mm-hmm. Uh, going to Southern, my, my freshman year, I realized that at Southern especially, it's the people who make uh, these, these HBCUs. Mm-hmm. And... I wanted to showcase that. Like, we could talk about all of these other big name schools, but back then, nobody was talking about how lit the yard was. Like, first of all, the Greek life was insane. The pageants were insane. There, there were so many events going on on campus that nobody was was talking about. It. And 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 people, uh, I don't want to say were overlooking Southern. It's just, it just wasn't talked about because. I don't know, but I wanted to be a part of the change to where I wanted to showcase to my friends back home, like, hey, I'm at Southern and this is where it's at. And so that's what prompted me to start Dr. Price TV. Mm -hmm. So I I wanted to create a channel, not just for band, but to showcase black excellence in general, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I just built, worked my way up over time. You know, I started out with a BlackBerry and the very first iPad to come out. And, and <laughs> Hold hey, on, you were recording on Black? Oh, wow. You, yo, yeah, you were talking about yeah. being in the trenches, though. You was hey, in the man, trenches. That's that, that's that broke freshman budget, you know. You, mm-hmm, got, mm-hmm. you got and then yeah. work your way up from there. So, you know, yeah. I truly believe in despise not the small beginnings and, and, and mm-hmm. really getting it out the mud when you first start. And so, um, over time, I just started really taking my craft seriously and, and getting better at, at what I, I did. And my passion for, for filming and editing became uh, even greater. Yeah. So with that. So you were at Southern. Did you march? You didn't march. You were, you were no, there. No, no, no. I okay. was just okay. there. I was there. My major okay. was time. Uh, yeah. I was a regular freshman. And that was the thing. I didn't know how to be a regular student. Mm-hmm. I didn't know how to be a regular student. And so I started picking up a camera and filming everything around campus. So yeah. I was a young, curious mind going to everything. Like most you know what? Do. During that time, Marv, you know, it wasn't as common as today to see people vlog in and record. And so right, I'm sure right. you stood out, stood out very much. So, you know, yeah. uh, being that guy, here comes Marv with that camera. So I'm sure, yeah. you know, but that's back a good brand. Back but then, that's, here comes Marv with that iPad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that's branding right there, man. That, right. that, that sets you apart. It's a little, you know, it's 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 a dime a dozen almost nowadays with people with cameras and recording, but mm-hmm. I'm sure back then. Um, so that's dope, man. So 2011. So you were still in school when you started, Marv, uh, Dr. Yes. Marv, uh, Dr. Price TV. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, you talked about you wanted to really help spread the gospel on uh, HBCU culture, but when did you start 
becoming interested in recording bands specifically. Well, you've always recorded always. bands, and, always, but you, always. but but you, but you started with the Dolls. Help me, help me with that chronologic, chronologically, well, right there, man. When did I you start? Out, I started out with the bands first. I started filming with my cell phones and and and, and stuff like that. And then mm -hmm. I'm so grateful, right? Because I had some really good friends who were in my corner who wanted to see me succeed. And they were putting nuggets in my ear. Mm -hmm. This is around 2013. They were like, Marvin, um, you know, there's other people that are filming bands. There are other people filming Martin Bay. I'm going to tell you like this. This is one friend in particular. I'm going to tell you like this. If you want to make a name for yourself, you need to start filming the dance team. You need to start filming the dancing dogs. And so, you know, back then, all I knew was marching band. And so I asked him, I said, who the hell is going to sit up there and watch Dancing Dolls all day? Because back then, that was unheard of, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Absolutely. Yeah, he was it like, was. He was like, Marvin, I'm telling you, you start filming these Dancing Dolls and watch your channel blow up. I said, all right, I'm going to film. I'm going to do a video for Bayou Classic. And I said, next season, I'm going to start focusing more on the Dolls. So this is 2014. And so I did just that. In 2014, I um, started filming the Dancing Dolls. And it took me a minute because I was still filming the band. And I was also filming the Dancing Dolls. And it took me a minute to, 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 to watch my views. Notice that my views were, were, were getting higher and higher. And I didn't realize that I walked into um, a whole different lane, right? Mm -hmm. And... A lot of people ask me to this day, how did you know that, uh, you know, film and dance teams would be so big? The, the, the honest question is I, I, I didn't, but I understand why it is. You know, it's like football being the most popular sport, but basketball having the most popular players. Yeah. Why is that? Football, um, everybody goes and watches football, right? It's the number one sport to watch. And with the dancers, there's less of them. There's 13 of them, right? There's mm -hmm. 13, 10, 11, 12, 13 of them that are, are dancing, and you can see their faces versus a band. It's one big unit, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And with these dancers, you can see their personalities and stuff like that. And the reason why basketball players are more popular than football players is because you can see their faces on the court yeah you see individuality yeah and it's the same way with the dance teams these these dance fans you can see their individualities when they're dancing dancing and with that uh this person becomes their favorite and this person becomes their favorite yeah. and it's a it's a different norm like the band could be playing the same song each week but the dancers be can do a different move uh, from one week to the next. And so it keeps people tuned in. And so if you look at that concept that way, you'll understand why the dance world has become more popular, um, especially with the fact that dance is on TV. Right now, dance is more mainstream um, than marching band. And, you know, they got TV shows catered to, to dance. They got, um, they got a whole bunch like the of- majorette, Like the Majorette style shows. Yeah, like the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's, 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 that, yeah mm -hmm. you know, with that, you know, I, I was going to try to touch on it later. But with that, a lot of these girls who were doing the Majorette styles on TVs, they, they grow up and they graduate and they dance on these teams and they bring their following base with them. And it just caused an even bigger audience to watch the HBCU dance teams as well. And so the formula is simple, you know, that, you know, dance is more popular right now just because it's mainstream. Um, it doesn't make the band less important. You know, it just it just is what it is. You got to look at it from that football or basketball perspective when it comes to players. You said it's more popular because of what? I missed I missed the, what you let, the, the um, last part. So it's more popular just because of dance is more mainstream. It's more yeah. mainstream. Yeah, I think I think people can just relate because dance is is such a common language. You know, uh, yeah. not everybody plays a horn. Not everybody can, you right. know, uh, read music. So it's like 
it's a it's uh they're both a skill set and a talent nonetheless people can relate more to dance because everybody dances everybody has rhythm well not everybody has rhythm but you know what i'm saying um <laughs> it's 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 more of a common uh uh thing so i think that's why that that's a big part of why it's a little more digestible man you put right. somebody you put a band in front of a uh, of a camera people will appreciate it but they can't necessarily relate to it right you know what i'm saying um but somebody dances like oh man they're doing a move i could probably try to emulate that you know what i'm saying so right. i think that that you, you got to look at um and i i do agree with you, what you said though it's 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 just becoming very mainstream because of that man so but i also you know and i forgot who i was talking to a while ago on this man but there are um a lot of role players and key players in the band as well man that right. ha that bring just as much personality if if given the the limelight and that's one th maybe that's a lane that another okay. team another media so whoever's watching this there's an opportunity i think to cover the section leaders to cover the drum majors you know specifically the people who are uh in front of these sections man um mm -hmm. you know and i don't think anybody has de dedicated just a channel and a platform for just those band members man not to say that the rest of the members aren't important but that's a start, you know what I'm saying? Um, I think that what you do and what other channels do as far as covering the dancers are it's important because you know it's it's, mm -hmm. it's 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 its own lane, you know what I'm saying? But I think there's a, so many other opportunities that we're missing. But that's nothing to do with what we're talking. We're talking about what you do as you know, and your channel is dope. So um, I know personally, I, I you know I have a show or whatever, and you see me speaking, but. Naturally, I'm an introvert, Ma. <laughs> you know, um, and people would think, well, you got a platform and you talking and stuff. Ooh, they wouldn't understand. But I think I would more, I'm more of a social introvert. You know, I have like a small window where I can be an extrovert. You know, I can kind of just, but uh, the major, majority of the time, I'm, I'm, I'm in my own head. I'm just to myself, man. So um, with that, um, what was I going with? So when you started the channel, you know, did you have a good relationship? Were you were you building a relationship with the band staff, or you know, um, did you just take it upon yourself to say, "All right, I'm the, I'm gonna go out here and film the," because you know they have that's, it's its own entity. Obviously, it's not right. Southern; it's the band. You know, they had that's their own brand right there, man. Uh, what's your relationship? What was your relationship then when you started? And mm -hmm. we can get more into where what it, what it is now, obviously. But um, yeah, let's get back to when you first started. Did you did you did you work with them at all? Well, the uh, I'm so thankful for uh, Mr. Lawrence Jackson because, um, like I said, I, at the time before the 2013 season happened, I was just filming with whatever I had at the time. So I um, was filming videos of the bands, and it was actually getting some views, some of them. And he saw that, and it was him who gave me my very first media pass in 2013. Woo, okay. And, you know, back then when he gave it to me, I didn't even see a, a media pass as, as something that's obtainable. I looked at, at the guys that were standing on the field as the, the upper echelon ESPNs very important. Right, right, to, right. To give little old me, what was I, a sophomore at the time in, in college, a media pass, that meant a lot to me. And yeah. so – I was excited. I, I was excited, and so I appreciated that. And so, you know, Mr. J was 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 he had just one simple rule: just make sure the band looks good and make sure the band sounds good. And I, I tried to do my best with that. I didn't know everything about recording back then, but um, I think we did a, a really good job um, with, with just making sure that happened. Uh, I think that was the year that that. Uh, my first video had went viral. Uh, VSOP, um, uh, K. Michelle had had a song that was hot at the time. It's called VSOP, okay. and she actually shouted it out on um, Twitter and Instagram. And at that time, that became one of the very first celebrity uh, shoutouts that any marching band had ever received. And so that was big. My first year recording on the yeah. sidelines, and I got a, a viral video. And so that's dope. The was good. Um, the arranger, uh, shout out to Brian Simmons, he was good. He was still in the band at the time when he wrote that song. And so um, everything works together. And I, I've learned that over the years, um, everybody plays a role. Like you know, you know, we can have like a discussion on who does what. But 
you know, the band plays good music um, because of the talented musicians. The talented musicians, in order to showcase their talents, they need great arrangers to write something down on paper. To see the final product and send it out to the world, that organization needs media. And mm-hmm. so everybody plays a role in, in making a good product um, great and showcasing it to the masses. And so um, I never like to say, oh, my video went viral. I always say the video of Southern went viral because yeah. that's really what it is. Um, you cover uh, Southern prim- uh, ex- exclusively, right? Or do you cover other schools as well? I try to cover other schools when I get a chance. Like I did Jackson State. I've done Alabama State. Um, but it's mostly Southern. Just right, right there in my backyard. And right, right. So, okay. Yeah. Say it again. I cut you off. What was it the last thing you said? And I graduated from there. So Yeah, yeah. So when you started, um, you know, what other teams were – doing what you were doing were there any other teams they're recording along with you that you can name um at the time it was me and um their official cameraman but that was it that okay. was, it. That was um, it now every now and then uh like for the big games you had your killer Kev show up you had your marching uh networks okay. marching sport so those guys came out but at that time, 2013, 2014, the, 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 the band media game was really small. Like it wasn't the 20, 30 camera guys that you see today that's filmed. Yeah. So it was really a yeah. small thing. So, you know, um, 2021, 2022, you know, compared to 2011, 2014, mm-hmm. you know, there, there there weren't any. There may be a few, but there weren't many anyway. There weren't many in-house media teams, right. you know, uh, meaning a band having its own dedicated team branded under, you know, itself. You know, the mm-hmm. human jukebox media team or the all corn, you know, so... Let's talk about relevancy. You know, relevancy in 2021, 2022. Um, is there still a need? You know, with every almost every band has an in-house media team. Let's talk a little bit about the contrast between the two as far as independent media team and in-house. I guess talk about the, the lanes that they, each of those may have mm-hmm. and talk about is there still a need? You know, uh, let, let's, let's end it with that. Is there still a need for both entities? My answer to that is yes. If used the right way, yes. And I say that because it's good that every band now has its own media team. That's great. They can use their footage for whatever. However, you know, I always tell people, you have to keep your supporters and viewers in mind. And I believe that the job of an official media team is to showcase their band in the best light. The truth of the matter is, even though they're showcasing their band in the best light, the best light may not be the actual story that happened that day. And so what you need then for somebody is for somebody to tell the truth, for somebody that that's unbiased and to tell a real story, because it's like, OK, why would I want to just only watch one perspective of one of a band battle? knowing that this media team favors their band that they're responsible for for recording, why can't I, I watch an unbiased view, right? I want to see the raw and uncut. I want to see what really happened at the zero quarter. I want to see who really won halftime. I want to see who really won fifth quarter. And I think that's where independent media um, play a major role because truth be told, I don't care who's over what. I don't care who hires who. I guarantee you that every band director, every band member is going to watch more than just one version of a band battle that happened. I know I do. Yeah. I know yeah. I, I mean, do. I do. I do because I actually uh, just, I'm an audio guy, man. Right. So right. certain certain channels have their 
you know, they, they dedicate a little more attention to their audio, man. So right. I know I'll it's watch different. some for the visual, some for right. the audio, some for the whatever it may be. So mm -hmm. yeah, I got you. I agree with you. Right. And I guess, you know, you got to look at it like this. The, the band media team today, the official band media teams are more focused on visuals. You mm. still have your Killer Kells and, and your Gerard Howards who focus more on audio. And that's why those guys are relevant. Like you can have one camera angles and get thousands of views simply because your audio is banging. Yeah. Right? And so you can't discredit what those guys do. Those guys have hundreds of thousands of subscribers for a reason. Mm -hmm. And that's because raw and uncut audio in the band world today, even though technology is advancing, audio still matters when it comes to film and marching bands. And so you can have all. I mean, it should. You know, yeah. it's it's a. You can have all the camera music. angles you right. want, right. but but the audio is still going to be your most important component. Yeah, I mean, um, I agree. I agree. Uh, you used the word or the combination of words, raw and uncut, um, mm -hmm. and we also discussed that last week um did you catch the interview from last week with mr taylor i caught the snippers that was uh sent to me yeah oh somebody sent you some screenshots what's going on oh, we, we can get into okay. that man but anyway uh the uh <laughs> the uh topic came up about i guess this this conversation here in regards to um independent media teams and he gave examples of why the raw and uncut actually um it's kind of dangerous in a sense where it it shows some girl being groped or something like that or uh another example he gave so how raw and uncut do you think um is 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 an is uh necessary man do you think that we have meaning we as because i'm a media team as well but do you mm -hmm. think we have a responsibility to protect the images of our bands that we cover also or do you are you saying that Whatever happened needs to be shown. Um, what's your train of thought on that? I think there's a, 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 a fair reasoning um, when it comes to both sides. Obviously, if there's like a nip slip or somebody being touched inappropriately, the, the humane thing to do is edit it out, right? Mm -hmm. Edit it out. And if you're, I think it's also fair to say if you don't want um, your band live stream throughout the game, fine, that, that, that's fair. But as far as um, everything else, as far as keeping the original sound, um, if, if somebody, uh, if a band messes up in the middle of a band battle, I think that should remain in because it's a band battle. Like, I mean, I, I forgive me, but I grew up marching in a band to where we were taught that, okay, don't mess up. This is why we're rehearsing. So, you know, when it's time for the performance, we only have one shot. There's a reason why they called it one shot. Mm -hmm. It's not, okay, let's tell our cameraman to, to edit this out so we can do the same thing that we messed up on next week. No. You practice how you perform, and then when it's time for a performance, you give it all you got. Yeah. Accidents happen. Mess-ups happen. But what we can't do is um, we can't control everything. You, you know, whatever happens, happens. Because, like, let's say if – uh, hypothetically, Jackson State and, and Alabama State are battling, and Alabama State messes up. But because I want to show Alabama State in their best light, I want to edit that part out. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the people that are on Jackson's side, they're like, okay, well, this is not what really happened. Like, you know, mess up being included in a band battle video will could probably determine the, out, determine the outcome of a winner or a loser. But because we're not telling the whole story, like that's the job of media at the end of the day, is to tell the whole story, tell what actually happened, right? I mean, I, I mean, we we are we are visual and audio journalists, man. We're right. journalists, and it's, you know, right. we, we, we tell the story. Forget that. I, I I think people forget that. I think I think because there's so many misconceptions of band media, mm -hmm. a lot of uh, directors and people at, in charge only want. They want to control what's being told instead of actually having the truth come out. And I think that's where a lot of the disconnect is. I think one thing, uh, and we didn't touch on this. With, I wish we would have touched on it in my last interview with Mr. Taylor. But it, make no mistake about it, man. Uh, music education in America is under attack, man. I mean, the arts in general is under attack. You right. know, So I think if you look at it through that lens, and I, I'm, I try to keep this in mind, you know, just 
when I even when I'm doing these edits, when I when it was a lot that was said in Mr. Taylor's interview, along with other interviews that I had to edit and make sure it told the, uh, a story that's going to put us put us in the in the best light. But I just know that at the end of the day, the big picture is we want to we want to um, preserve the culture and legacy of what, like you said, St. Aug and you know I marshal over here in Maryland. Even the band scene out here was stronger a decade, two decades ago, man. But um, I think I agree with what you're saying that we should tell the story as raw and uncut as possible. But we also have to keep in mind, man, we, we're trying to preserve the culture that we love and, right. and uh, have come to love, man. So right. I just think if there's a way to really just marry those two together, then mm -hmm. we're in good shape, man. I, I, I think that is good that we're having these conversations, though. So do you think overall, man... Um, the, the, that band directors, do they have a general understanding of what band media is? I don't think so. Um, and that's just because you look at the, the scope of band directors today, head band directors, a lot of them were marching in a band pre-YouTube era. Mm -hmm. And so they weren't familiar with the concept of band media until they actually became band directors. So it's new. Um, and it, I think, to be honest with you, it's new for everybody. Because YouTube was created in 2004, and then I guess band media didn't start hitting YouTube consistently until like 2008, 2009, 2010, something like that. And so a lot of people are trying to figure out, okay, what is this new thing that we're constantly seeing? It's like, okay, yes, we're the best band. Yes, we're the the, the Lakers of marching band, but are we really ready for that Lakers type of publicity? <laughs> that's that's the questions that we, we have to ask. And I think, you know, speaking on behalf of a lot of the videographers, all of us are approachable, right? All of us can have great relationships with, with band directors if they're, they're willing to have that. And I think there's a lot of things that, that, that have been said behind closed doors that just aren't true. Uh, as far as what band media really is and why we do what we do. Um, and I think there needs to be an understanding of that. And I think it starts with a simple conversation, right? Who should initiate that conversation, though, Who, in your opinion? Whoever has the problem, right? Because you got to look at it. Um, up until recently, you know, there was a way to apply to get media passes, right? Mm -hmm. And... If band directors want more control over who's getting passes to film bands, then maybe they should be the ones to initiate conversations if they're the ones that are having the issue with it. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Um, so I, I think, uh, well, I, I know, I, I spoke to a, free, a few band director friends of mine this year, this summer, and a few conversations was had, man, about possibly just requiring payment, requiring uh, uh, fees to be imposed um, this past fall. It didn't happen, but actually a few band directors did impose some fees in order for you to film their bands. I'm not going to throw any names out there, but a few of them did uh, go that route. But um, the monetary aspect is something that probably needs to be discussed, man, um, as far as what's being made via the YouTube channels that are um, recording the bands, man. You know, I think that that's part of the confusion as far as, far as the uh, how can we word this Marv so there's money being made obviously some channels mm -hmm. making more than others you know um, I think a lot of the times we think I mean, a lot of times the band directors think that we're running away with the bank you know oh no you know you, you making all this money on my band um, we can't allow that so get a little bit into you know the money that's being made versus the money being spent on, you know uh, let's, let's start there money in money out um, this, what do this, you think, in your opinion, is 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 the further on the tipping scale, the money being spent or the money being made? Let me just say this. Let me just say this. You know, I've heard whispers about band directors requiring payment and uh -huh, uh -huh. of that nature. Mm -hmm. I'll say this. Um, speaking on behalf of Doctor Price TV, the cameras that I use. The money that I spent on traveling, it comes from me, right? And it comes from money that's generated from my channel, right? So my channel is well diverse. And I'll say this, it, it, the, 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 the notion that band media, independent band media is just making bank 
off of these marching bands is 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 absurd. Um, you know it. The the cost of travel is ridiculous. Um, the wear and tear on that I put on my Jeep to go from point A to point B is a lot. The camera that I use, camera plus the lens is over five thousand dollars. That's nobody just giving me that type of money. Like the money that I make from YouTube, first of all, is not a lot. It's not enough to live off of. Real quick before you before you go any further, just a quick breakdown. Mm -hmm. For every thousand views, just for the general viewer here, this is a simple equation. Four to five dollars is made for every thousand views. Um, so if you do the math, it, you know, you got to get some decent views coming in to even make some decent money. So right. there's not a lot of money being made. And then you got to pay taxes on that. And then right. there's other YouTube is going to get their cut. So anyway, go ahead. I just want to just make sure we throw that out there. It's, it's, right. it's, that's the equation. So go ahead. And so with that, I think that it's absurd that band directors uh, actually have the audacity to try to charge people to, 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 to film their programs. Like if I, the people that are filming or, or, or taking pictures at football games, right? These independent photographers, they're not being charged for a media pass, right? And they're, they're putting their photos in magazines and stuff like that. You don't hear the football team saying, hey, we want our cut. We want to get paid off of this. No, that's not how this works. I don't pay to work, first of all. Like, this is this is a job to me. It's something I take seriously, and it's something that I invest in heavily. But I'm not going to pay to film a, a marching band when I'm already paying to come and get to the game and paying for a hotel and all that stuff. So the only thing I'll say to, to the band directors that are um, – having these, these meetings with the SWAT commissioner and all of this other stuff is this. You, you look at both sides. You, you want to look at how much we're making. Uh, look at how much we're spending. And I, I can honestly say this. Everybody's independent for a, media, uh, for a reason, right? These independent media teams aren't sponsored by anybody. The money that they make from their channel, that's how they get to these games. Mm -hmm. I think band directors just have this, 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 mentality that we just magically show up but have absolutely no idea how we get there some people come by plane some people come by mega bus we get there by any means necessary and we film your band and broadcast it to the world most of the big name videographers have thousands and thousands of, uh, of people that are following them and so to, to ask for money i think that's the I think that's where a lot of the issue starts. You start counting other people's pockets and you think that you know something. And because you don't ask the right questions to the right people, you just start assuming. And when you start assuming things like that, you start making decisions too hastily. And I can speak on so much more, but I'll just end it at that. I think we all work hard at what we do. And I was taught growing up that you go to school to get a good education so you can get a good job and you can get paid. Everything I have, I work for. Everything I work for, I earn. And so if anybody has a problem with what I'm making, I mean, I think that's something they need to talk to us about or me about, and then we can have a conversation. I can give you a breakdown on, um, on what I spend my money on because I pay taxes on it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> So you follow, you know, you uh, cover the dolls, the uh, the fabulous dancing dolls from Southern University. But uh, what are some other? Uh, do you do you follow dance culture in general, or uh, are you a yeah, fan you of have dance? to, you have to, you have okay. to. Okay. Okay. Um, so what other I, what other teams do you do you like? Um, you know, uh, I started covering the dolls just because you know it was the, the 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 thing that I saw every day. It was on campus. I went to class with these girls and I graduated. Um, and over time, I just kept filming them. It became family. But, you know, I, I started paying attention to the culture, number one, because I wanted to get better at my craft. And so I started looking at uh, the dolls, quote unquote, rivals, you know, the, the Stingettes. Um, you had Asia Martin on your show uh, a few months back. And to me, she's like the greatest Stingette of all. Shout time. out to Asia Martin. Yes, yes. She's, yeah. she's, she's a great businesswoman too, man. Right. Yes, she is. Yes, yeah. she is. Very intelligent. Um, mm -hmm. I like the, the Stingettes. Um, Alcorn. I love Alcorn's dance team. Uh, they 
they don't hold nothing back when they dance. Uh, and I think that's one of the reasons why they're the most watched dance team uh, in the SWAC right now is because of their they they really get down and they 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 trying to, to to battle the team across from them. And um, shout out to the whole staff over at Alcorn. They're doing some great things, and it's good to see the popularity of that program grow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah gets Alcorn um, and the J sets. I like the J sets too. You know, uh, with the, I guess, recent interest, not even recent, because, you know, this has been a long, long time interest in dance culture, man. But do you think um, film and dance teams, has film and dance teams hurt band culture? No, I don't think it's hurt band culture. I think if band directors understand the dance culture more, it could help the band culture. I think the people that say it's hurting the, the dance culture or um, the people who just don't understand why people film dance, you just, you have to understand. Uh, it goes back to my method uh, I said earlier, you know, there's less people that are on the dance team. And I'll say this, they all they have to do is use their mindset that, especially for your collegiate teams, just keep in mind that they're one entity, right? Mm -hmm. So everybody plays a role. I remember in 2017, that was like the perfect year to to like to really go back and grasp on on what I'm trying to say, right? So the the band was just on point. The dancing dolls were 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 just they they took off. They 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 elevated their style. They were doing new stuff. And there was just so much excitement around the Dolls that year. I'll never forget. Uh, there was the final home game against Prairie View. There were some arrangements that were just so good that Southern played, even though the people that were watching the dancers mm -hmm. had to just sit back and, and be like, oh, my God, that band sounds good. And it was two songs in particular. It was I Love Your Smile mm -hmm. and I Hear Your Name. I forget who arranged those two songs, but – there were certain parts in that song where you could just hear the crowd screaming. Yep. And everybody around me was watching the dancers, but the musicianship and the musicality of the band just, it just came through that you had to give props to both entities, band and dance team. So it's like, even though a lot more people watch the dancers, if you do what you have to do as an arranger and as a director, and you just got to have the understanding that you're going to shine regardless. I don't know, man. Uh, well, I will. It's going to start some shit. I already feel it, man. But a lot of times a dance team can carry a band. I'll go ahead and say it. Uh -huh. you know, it it's happened. You know, so I think that um, from a branding standpoint, I think that some band directors understand what the dance team can do for their for the image of their program. You know, um, I'll go ahead and say it, man. Alabama State has been, did a whole 180, man. They yep. sound damn good this past right. season. That wasn't they ain't been the, that wasn't the case for a long time. You know, um, back in the mid mid two thousands, that's probably when they were at the strongest. Um, everybody references that battle they had with Jackson, where they played Freaky Girl. Mm -hmm. I agree, Lincoln, man. But everybody know if you're a band head, you know about that that performance, oh, man. But yeah, oh wait, man. So you know, I, I think that. Um, between that time to where we are now, this this past season, you know the Stingettes they did their thing, you know, oh, yeah. and I think that without proper coverage, a lot of folks wouldn't have known about the Stingettes and exactly. wouldn't have you know and and the the, the brand Mighty Marsh and Hornets stayed afloat because of it, man. I mean, I hate to say it, you know, um, I'm gonna catch heat for it. I love y'all, Alabama true. State. I love you know I love y'all, man. I just gotta keep it real, man. So, but y'all back, y'all back. 2021 Alabama State sound damn good, man. So, I think that um. It's relevancy to what you're saying, man. So go ahead. Yeah, it, it, it's true. It's like nothing I'm saying is is, is not meant to be a shot at, at anyone, right? So I, I'm just saying right now, the facts are the facts. Dance teams are more popular than marching bands. And if you want your program in the 21st century to get the spotlight that it wants to get, you have to understand and use your method that, that they're, they're one entity and it doesn't matter where somebody's camera is pointing as long as the audio is still good mm -hmm. 
and people are gonna recognize the band and their arrangements regardless absolutely all right let's take a break right here Mar. we're gonna cut to um man you sent me a list of your of your favorite clips man we gonna go ahead and cut to that right there this is dr price tv you know check it out we're gonna be right back Southern University and the fabulous dancing dolls right there, man. Uh, I love your smile. 2017, recorded by man himself, Marvin Price, Doctor Price TV, man. That was dope. Uh, so, what are you filming with, Doc? Let me call you Doc, oh, Doctor Dre, like Doctor Dre. Look, I learned yeah, earlier, man. You know, he said I'm a doctor like Doctor Dre, and I thought that was funny because, you know. So, uh, where is my camera? At? Uh, yeah, I had it up here. Uh, I'm filming with a Sony uh, FX3, Sony FX3. You know, uh, and I have a um, G Master 24 millimeter 1.4 lens, um, and I also have a Sony A7S3 as well. Oh, you stepped it up because you were shooting when you were on Canon a few years ago. Yep, I was on Canon. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, hey, this I, is the part. This is part of the interview I've been waiting on, y'all. You know, I'm a, I'm a tech guy. <laughs> consumers, and so I said, screw Canon, I'm going to Sony. You said they were what? I got tired of Canon cheating their consumers, man. Mm. I said, screw that. I'm going to Sony. I heard good things about that. Uh, I was about R5, I think. It's cool. Is that what it is? R6? R5. Yeah, the R5. I like the R6 better than the R5. Yeah. Um, R6 doesn't overheat. Yeah. Um, uh, what are you doing for audio? Audio? I have the same thing you're using. I'm using the H4N Pro. I think nope. you might have five, huh? I got the H4N Pro. I'm still in yeah. the old school, man. Um, hey, man. That's the job. Yeah. Give give us some give us some tips, man. Any any media teams that's watching this or just aspiring media folks, give uh give them a few pointers, man. Just, just some do's and don'ts you think uh coming coming in your in your opinion. What would you tell these new folks just starting out their, their channel? Um, budget. Uh huh. Budget. Budget. Um, I, I always sit, tell people to to start within your means, right? Like, I we all have to start from somewhere. Right. So get the equipment that you can afford mm -hmm. and don't go broke trying to 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 do band media. Mm -hmm. um, that's one thing. Number two, the, the most successful 
band videographers, dance videographers are the ones who found their own niche and who have their own lane, right? Like you want to do something that 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 nobody else is doing or you want to do something with your own twist, your own spin to it. Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of bands I feel like that that's not being covered um, that would love the exposure. So see if you can get in contact with those band directors. Um, see if they're willing to, to get that type of exposure. Because for what we do in our craft, believe it or not, with all of the, the hoopla that's going on, we still play a big role in recruitment. Like we still play a big role in these bands getting new band students and people taking a look at their their universities in general. So see if you can make the right connections, um, plan ahead, and always have a plan B in place. So that's my advice to anybody um, that's looking to get into band media or that's already in band me- media, still starting out small. Yeah, yeah, man. So. Um... Should I, th- I, th- I thank you for being on the show, bro. Um, I think that we have to continue these conversations um, in order to bridge the gap between, uh, you know, on, on, in all parties, man. I think that there's a lot of misconception. And just when you make your own assumption of what's going on, a lot of times it's, it, it can be it can be wrong, man. So I think that uh, um, these kind of dialogues have to continue, brother. So. I do thank you, Ma, for being on. Uh, you got any questions for me or anything you wanted to just throw out there contact-wise, people, how people can reach you? Just let's end it with whatever you want to end it with, man. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, like I said, I'm a big fan of the show, big fan of the channel. I am a subscriber. Appreciate so if you're watching, number one, subscribe to this man's channel. You know, I'm going to do what I can to, to support uh, this interview. So if you're not a subscriber, if you subscribe to me, you should be subscribed to him because he he's helping the band culture out significantly. And I appreciate what you're doing and I appreciate you for having me on the show. Um, if you haven't heard of me before, if you don't know me, uh, check me out. My Instagram is D-R-P-R-I-C-E underscore is right. Um, my YouTube is Marvin Price. Uh, please subscribe. Uh, please hit me up on Instagram. I love to interact with people who watch support and subscribe so i do appreciate that and continue to support uh the culture continue to support all of the band media and media in general that's that's showcasing black excellence that's happening at these hbcus and despite everything that's been said everything that's been going on that's the main goal still to the end of the day i think we all have the same goal we all have one goal in common we just have some 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 uh some disagreements on how to get there. But the main goal is to support black excellence and showcase it in the best light. So continue to support all of these channels that are doing so. And again, thank you so much for for, for watching me and having me on. Man, I appreciate you, man. Um, likewise, I, def- I definitely think that what you're doing is groundbreaking. You know, it, you, know you, you, you are definitely a pioneer in the game, Marv, no matter what anybody says, man. So um, I do want to make sure that I shout shout out your Instagram and your YouTube. I'm going to go ahead and put all that in the in, in the description of this video. Um, I think what I'll do is I'm going to end this because you're going to send it to me. You said you're going to yep. end this with uh, first of all, give me a clip that you want to close out with. One of your favorite clips on your channel. We're going to we're going to start with that, but we also going to sequence into Marv Price playing sousaphone for the Saint Aug Marching 100, man. So we got to check it out, man. So yeah, we're going to close out with that. Um, okay. This has been Meet Me on the 50. We going to probably go with Meet the Media. We said Behind the Lens, maybe the name. I kind of like Meet the Media, man. So this has been Meet the Media with Dr. Price TV. Catch y'all next time. We out. <laughs>